Hey guys, it's Max here from Australian Vaporizers, and today we're going to be looking at two great portable vapes side by side. The two units I'm going to be comparing today are the Crafty by Stores and Bickle and the Pax 2 by Pax Labs. So we've already compared the Crafty to the original Pax in an earlier video, but if you haven't seen it, I'll give you a spoiler, the Crafty one. Will the Pax 2's updated feature set tip the scales in its favour, or will the Crafty continue its reign? You'll find out by the end of this video. The original PAX was, despite its flaws, hugely popular. PAX Labs say they've sold over 500,000 units since release. That's a big effort. There has been a lot of improvements over the original design, so if you weren't a fan of the PAX 1 for some reason, this one might win you back. The Crafty was released in late 2014 and has been a massive hit just like the PAX products. As most of you probably know, it was introduced alongside the bigger version with more battery life and the LCD screen, that one's called the Mighty. Both great units. Stores and Bickle, you're probably aware of them, they're the maker of the Volcano Vaporizer and they're definitely a force to be reckoned with in the vaporizer industry. While the Crafty isn't as perfect a device as the Volcano or the Mighty, the performance from the unit is pretty amazing. Looking at the units side by side here, they're both pretty tiny. The PAX 2 is definitely smaller, but both will fit in any sort of pocket with no worries at all. Looking at the build quality, I'm a huge fan of the PAX 2. I mean, both of these units are really well made, but there's something about the brushed aluminium body and the minimalist design, it's just super sexy. The Crafter uses a high temp plastic body, which makes it lighter than most other portables of its size. I still think the PAX 2 is the winner for me though, in terms of build quality. Both of these vapes are fairly easy to use. They both use a single button, which keeps things nice and simple. Thankfully, the PAX 2 no longer uses that spring-loaded mouthpiece to power the device on and off like the original did. Instead, you've just got this little button here on the top. They've also improved the way that you change the temperature on this PAX. With the original, you had to remove the mouthpiece to change the temperature. Now, you can put it into temp selection mode by holding the button down for a second or two and then tapping the same button to scroll through the presets. The PAX 2's presets range roughly from 182 to 215 degrees Celsius. Hold the button again or shake the unit to start your sesh. To turn the crafty on, you just hold this orange button here and double tap the same button to switch between the two temp presets. The light will change from solid to a flash when that second temperature is enabled. So yes, only two presets with the Crafty as opposed to the PAX 2's 4, but these two presets are actually programmable and you can adjust them with the Android or iPhone app. The stock settings are 180 degrees and 195 degrees Celsius, but the app lets you change either of these to anywhere between 40 and 210 degrees. The app connects your phone to the vape via Bluetooth and it lets you view the battery life in more detail as well as some customization options for the unit. So we've got vibration control, LED brightness, heat up alarms, stuff like that. It is a really cool feature but I've found myself using it less and less over time. If you're somebody who likes complete control over your vaporizer and you don't mind tinkering around a bit then it's definitely up your alley. The PAX 2 on the other hand is just simple and functional. I think ease of use between the two units is pretty similar. It's worth mentioning that the PAX 2 heats up in around half the time of the Crafty. So I found that with a full battery charge the Crafty takes around 2 minutes to reach its maximum temperature and the PAX 2 takes just over a minute. The Crafty also uses a handy vibration alert to let you know when the units finish heating or when it automatically shuts off. One area where the Crafty really shines is airflow. There's much less resistance than the PAX 2, so it feels a lot more comfortable to use, especially when you're taking longer draws. When you're looking for a new portable, it's really important to consider the size of the filling chamber. If you're somebody who likes smaller sessions, then you need to be sure that the unit will perform well when partially filled. The PAX 2's filling chamber is larger than the Crafty's, but not by much. As I've mentioned in other videos, the Crafty comes with this little liquid pad here which can be used for vaping concentrates, but it also acts as a filling chamber spacer. I put this pad on top of my herb basically every time I use the unit, even when it's completely filled I just kind of jam it on top like this. This keeps the cooling unit much cleaner over time. There is a third party spacer available for the PAX 2 called the PAX Pusher. 
This basically does the same thing as the Crafty's liquid pad, but it lacks the concentrate support and it doesn't really keep the unit any cleaner. I don't really understand why Pax Labs didn't just include something like this in the kit to begin with. It would have been really handy. So here's a little demo of the two units in action. They start off producing fairly similar amounts of vapor, but you've got to bear in mind that the Crafty uses less material in general to achieve these results. You'll notice here that after the first draw, the Crafty just keeps powering through, whereas the Pax 2 seems to start producing less and less vapor pretty quickly. This is partly because the Crafty's cooling unit allows you to take much longer draws without it being too harsh. Now obviously the average user would take longer breaks in between these drawers, uh, which would keep both units going for a bit longer, but the results still speak for themselves. Don't get me wrong, for its size, the Pax 2's vapor production is pretty great. It is however largely dependent on how finely you grind and how tightly you pack it. The Crafty on the other hand operates flawlessly even if your grind is fairly coarse and loosely packed. I'm guessing this is mainly because the Crafty heats via two methods simultaneously, conduction and convection. The walls of the filling chamber are heated just like the Pax 2, but you've also got the heat from the element underneath which is being drawn over your material like a fan forced oven. This also makes sure that the heat is distributed a bit more evenly across the chamber. The Crafty is definitely a winner when it comes to cooling capacity. The mouthpiece and this cooling unit assembly here do a great job of taming the vapour before it hits your mouth. The Pax 2's cooling is definitely awesome for its size, but if you use them both one after another, you'll definitely feel what I'm talking about. Both of these units do produce great tasting vapour, but the Crafty's cooling capacity and efficiency definitely make it the top performer when it comes to overall vapour quality. The Pax 2 and the Crafty both have a built-in sensor which is designed to detect your drawers. They are slightly different though, Pax Labs calls it lip sensing technology which is designed to lower the temp of the oven in between your drawers. This is mainly to conserve battery life and keep your material from overcooking while you're not using it. It does have pretty awesome battery life, so this could be one of the reasons why. Additionally, the Pax has a three minute automatic shut off, which will only happen when the unit's been sitting still. That's pretty cool. The Crafty sensor is more so designed to bypass the one minute automatic shut off while it's being used. The main problem here is that you need to take a pretty hefty draw to trip the sensor which isn't natural for most people. If you are finding that the Crafty is shutting down on you in the middle of a session, you can just tap the power button to reset that timer. The Pax 2 and the Crafty both use internal rechargeable lithium batteries which are not replaceable by the user. Both units charge via a micro USB cable, but the Pax 2 actually sits on a magnetic charging dock rather than having a jack on the side of the unit itself like the Crafty does. You'll get about 3 or 4 10 minute sessions per charge with the Crafty, as opposed to the 6 or so 10 minute sessions that you'll get from the Pax 2. As always, please bear in mind that these figures depend on your temperature setting and your draw style. The Crafty does charge a bit quicker than the Pax 2, but only because it comes with a fast charging wall plug adapter. If you happen to have a spare 2000 milliamp USB to wall adapter laying around, the Pax 2 will charge in around 2 hours just like the Crafty. Still no pass-through functionality for the Pax 2 I'm afraid, so you can't use this thing while it's charging. As I mentioned in the last comparison though, if you use the Crafty while it's plugged in, the battery will still continue to slowly discharge, so it's not a true pass-through. Just a small setback for the Pax here, it's definitely still the winner when it comes to overall battery life. As far as maintenance goes, both the Pax 2 and the Crafty are fairly average. As I mentioned earlier, if you're using the Crafty's liquid pad every session as a spacer, the cooling unit actually stays pretty spotless except for some kind of minor oily buildup. I usually just use some isopropyl alcohol on a bit of paper towel to wipe out the filling chamber, the bottom of the cooling unit and the top screen every few weeks. You can take the cooling unit apart once every few cleans and just soak the individual parts in isopropyl alcohol. The Pax 2 will need more regular maintenance, but it's nowhere near as involved as what the original Pax was. The vapor path still needs to be cleaned using a pipe cleaner, but the filling chamber, oven lid and mouthpiece can simply be wiped out with isopropyl and some paper towel. When it comes to parts that need replacing, the Pax 2 is actually pretty good. The oven screen is a plate rather than a woven mesh like the Crafty's, so it won't fray over time. Not to mention the fact that the Crafty's liquid pads tend to block up after a while of use. If you do go for the Pax 2 though, you can definitely expect to go through your fair share of pipe cleaners. 
definitely two of the highest quality portables here. But if you're after something small and need to be using it frequently, and this is really surprising for me, I would actually go for the PAX 2. It has a simpler feature set, less moving components, better battery life, and a more durable casing. With that being said though, is it really worth the trade-off when the Crafty's vapor quality and airflow are so great? It's a tough one. The PAX 2 has a 10-year warranty, which is hard to beat. The Crafty has a 2-year warranty, which is great, but obviously with a longer warranty comes more peace of mind. As I've mentioned in other videos, when the PAX 2 first came out, I really wasn't expecting it to be much chop. I've definitely been proven wrong here. It's simple, discreet, reliable, and has great battery life. The Crafty, on the other hand, is still pretty discreet, and performance-wise puts even some home units to shame. Definitely a tough one. Look, I'd say it probably comes down to personal preference at the end of the day. I know that's not really what you want to hear from a video review, but if you're after reliability and discretion and you don't really care too much about precise temperature control, then the PAX 2 is probably your best bet. If draw resistance bothers you and you've got some sensitive lungs or you're just after the best vapor quality, then without a doubt the Crafty wins. So... There we are, two great units with two great purposes. It's been a pleasure using them both, but what do you guys think? If you've got any questions or anything you'd like to add, just shoot us a comment, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Once again, people, this is Maxim Australian Vaporizers. Hope you have a good one.